Hey, this is Joe from HomestudioCorner.com, and today I want to address a question that uh, one of my readers, John, submitted, and it has to do with sends and inserts within Pro Tools or really within any DAW that you may use. What are they? What are they used for? It can be a little confusing when you're starting out. So I've got a track here. This is just an acoustic part that I'm working on for a song. It's a newer recording. All right, so you can see I've got two tracks here. These are actually uh, a stereo mic acoustic guitar, so two mics on one guitar. And I've got those routed out of this, let's take a look, acoustic bus into this auxiliary track. And uh, so I can treat that, those two guitars, as one entity with different uh, settings, EQs, compressors, send it all to the same reverb, that type of deal. So that's where we're going to focus our attention, is this section up here. This is where you can find your inserts and your sends. So what are they used for? Well, real quick um, history. If you've ever used an analog console, you know that at the top of the console, you've got your mic inputs. Just below that, you've got a little quarter inch jack, and that's called a, it's an insert. So what that's used for is after the signal goes through the microphone, comes out of that insert, and you can send it off to an EQ, a gate, a feedback suppressor, I don't know, whatever you want to do, and then come back into that insert jack, the signal comes back, and then gets routed through the rest of the console. Same concept here. It's basically Pro Tools is just a digital mixer, except it's much more flexible. So instead of sending out to a piece of hardware, we're going to send out to a plugin. So for example, on these guitars, I'm going to want to EQ those. We'll bring up the uh, SSL channel strip here. And now these guitars are being routed through here. If I hit play, then you'll see signal there on the meter. And then if I do any processing, you'll, you know, you'll hear that as well. We'll do something dramatic just so you can hear. So this is all going through this one channel strip. Now this has an EQ and a compressor and all those fun goodies. But you may want to use individual units. So say this is just an EQ, I can come here and now I can pull up a certain compressor. And I've got both of these in the same line. It's all going from top to bottom through the EQ, then through the compressor, then down through the rest of the track. Now what's cool about these is you can rearrange them. So say I want to put the SSL after the C1. Whoop, there we go, done. And what's also cool is in the analog world, you'd have to repatch those. And if you wanted to try it without one of those, you'd have to basically repatch that as well. Here, if I want to hear it without the EQ or the compressor, I simply hold down Command and click on the plugin, and you'll see it's grayed out. That means it's bypassed. So anytime you want to hear it without, you just simply do that. You can do any number of those. So that's inserts. You can use it for any number of things, delays, reverbs. EQs, compressors, effects, everything lives on these insert fields here. And you have five, and you actually can access five more uh, if you need them, but <laughs> if you need f 10 inserts on a mix, something's wrong. Okay, sends. Sends are, as their name suggests, used to send things elsewhere. Now you can use these to send things out into the analog world if you want to use some analog hardware, if you're creating a mix for your musicians that you want them to hear. The idea came from consoles, analog consoles, you would have these aux sends or auxes. And these were used to um, send the vocal, for example, out to a reverb. These were also used to do a mix for the vocalist. So do a monitor mix where if he wants to hear more of himself, you would turn him up on those auxes. And that way he hears more of himself, but he doesn't get more coming through the house PA speakers. So it kind of an independent send. That's what these do, the exact same thing. For example, here, if I want to send this to a reverb, I simply come to my reverb bus, and if I hit play, you can see, um, well, real quickly, if I command click here, that lets me see the fader for that send. And as we hit play, you'll see if I turn this up, we'll have reverb in this reverb track. And so, I was just <laughs> that's a long reverb. Okay, so if you hold down command and hit that again, you can see, come up to assignments, you can see all your assignments. So I can have up to 10, but initially it shows you five. So I could send this out to something else like a delay. So if I want to have a reverb and also a delay, or also maybe a track with some distortion if it's an electric guitar, or really the possibilities are endless. I could send this out to another track to have these two be recorded as a single track. Maybe I want to have all the guitars in the song recorded to one track, so I can send that to somebody to listen to as a, a stereo mix. Really the possibilities are endless. And that's it. That's reverb. No, that's not reverbs. That's... um sends and returns and inserts and all that fun stuff. 
So hopefully that'll explain it. John, thanks for asking the question. If any of you have additional questions, head over to homestudiocorner.com if you're watching this on YouTube. Love to have you over there. There's a lot of cool videos and articles you can check out. And um, if you haven't signed up for my newsletter, be sure to do that this weekend. I'm going to be doing some recording, and I'm going to shoot some MP3s of some of the things I come up with out to my newsletter subscribers. And I've had a few of them actually send me some of their stuff, and we'll hopefully do some sort of a feature or a maybe a reader's uh, showcase of different stuff you guys are working on at your home studios. So hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching and listening, and uh, we'll see you back at the website.